My father's labor breathing is the key. The pastor I haven't seen since I was a girl says it's a matter of time. Expert at goodbyes, he tells me, with scientific tenderness, the reason behind that violent cadence that lulls or shakes the body of my father. In the living room, what's human burns. The family is consumed with the task of remembering. My aunts laugh despite crying. A relative I don't recognize greets me. From afar, his gaze says everything. I am a pintado. My forms resemble other forms. Antifilo, Uncle Pedro, our Eduviges. There are bodies in my body. In the background, the voices feed off of what wears out. My father says goodbye as good as he can. From his bedroom, he is telling us something we pretend to know and continue to ignore. The house had never seen so much life. My nephews, young and glossy, come and go. They also carry within their forms the perfect form of what dies out. Today, we all look like our father. You have his nose, she got his legs. The other one inherited the voluminous hair, the extremely thin lips, his undefined height. The youngest get close to the mystery with the unchanging smile, stoked by the ghost. They take his hand, mess up his hair, kiss him, take pictures of him in that state that will soon erase. Sometimes we stop talking to hear how time does away with my father, how the seconds abandon him. An old man asks my nephew if he'll be a preacher. The boy sighs, but doesn't answer. Someone gets close to ask me if I am the poet. I say yes and lower my head. I am his youngest child. I look at him from his favorite armchair, making a last stand, infinitely alone. His gaze is filled with a new nothingness necessary for the trip. My father's labored breathing is the key. Nothing catches up with us anymore. Nothing stops him now. It's fall and a breeze blows.